Hello everybody! How are we doing today? Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. It's Saturday, June 1st, and it is Decoupage Central release of their first of their Christmas papers. Yay! How exciting is that? If you're hopping on, please say hello so that I know that you're here and all that kind of fun stuff like that. Let me make sure that I'm actually live. It looks like I'm not. Let me refresh my page down here. Um, let me make sure, yep, there I am. There I am. So how is it going, you guys? Um, I am going to do something here real quick. I am going to comment my link to Decoupage Central. So you can go right there and you can, um, let's see if I can do it this way. There we go. There we go. Now let's see if we can pin it. I don't know if we can or not. It's been a minute since I've done things like that, but we will try. Let me see if I can do it up here. Hold on, pin comment. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, Jeanette, how we doing? How we doing? All right, you guys, today is going to be a fun day. Um, it's 10 o'clock here. Um, and I'm in Indiana, and Melissa from uh, Junk and Craft Treasures will be our last, thank you, thank you, Melissa, um, will be our last uh, creator today, and she comes on at 9 o'clock Eastern time, so if you're in my time zone, that's the time there, um, 8 o'clock Central, so we have a full day. Up after me is Ginger from Gingerly Creations, so when I'm done, go check her out. If you're watching in Decoupage Central on the page, just refresh and you'll be able to see everything that is going on. Okay, now I shared a reel today, um, also in my story. If you don't belong to my Telegram, I'd love it if you join my Telegram to know when I go live. I also have um, a few of the papers that are being released today in a little video. If you uh, follow me or subscribe to my YouTube channel, there is a short over there. And on TikTok, there is a um, little video of a snippet of a lot of the papers. A lot of the papers that you'll see today and stuff like that. So pretty exciting stuff happening around here pretty excited and I'll repeat all that stuff about midway through so that everybody that's not here yet catches on to that now I dug in the drawer and I got out my Christmas shirt this was the one on top so I just grabbed it and put it on so let me show you this is the paper that we're gonna be doing today okay isn't that pretty now this is one of the a3 pages so it's a larger print than just the paper, or just the ones that the size of the paper. I'm gonna shut my fan off here in a second. But this is the other one that she sent to me to do. Okay, now I really wanna do this uh, Santa Claus one because I think it's absolutely beautiful. And a couple of the others that she sent to us, just so that you can see them in, in person is, look at this beautiful Christmas tree. Is that not beautiful or what? I mean, the details are amazing. Um, and we're also going to probably try to do something with these guys right here. These are also new from the collection and stuff. So we've got all kinds of fun stuff going on today and going on here. Pretty excited. I pulled out my molds because I'm thinking that I want to do... Um, my IOD mold here that has the Christmas tree. I'm thinking I want to do this up here and down here. So I'm going to have to do it twice. So we're going to get started on that. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, when you're on my page, I don't mind that you come on as your business page. If you guys see anybody that comes on as their business page, make sure you follow them. Um, I believe Joey will be on later today. So that's exciting. And I just seen Gingerly Creations watching. That's who's up after me. So we're gonna come back to the Santas. We're gonna make like little tags and stuff with those. So let's get started here. First thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna start with this right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab, oops, I uh, was cleaning. You guys, I, I'm, I laugh about this. I was cleaning, but I still have a mess over here and behind me. But I was cleaning my table off because I got a new piece of glass to put on here. And I really, really want to stain this table. And I'm thinking of doing unicorn spit. I've been talking about it for well over a year. And I've never done it. And um, 
I need to just do it. And then I was worried about with all the color, I'm not sure if that's gonna be too much color. Good morning, Ginger. Yes, oh, first time watcher, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the cast resin because I find that to be the easiest, a little bit easier than clay, I think. But I need to do, because I'm wanting to do opposite corners, I need to do this one two times. So I'm just gonna make enough, I hope, Last time I did this, I had a total mess and screwed everything up, got dry, all that kind of fun stuff. But um, we're gonna we're gonna try. So I want to make enough for that and let it set up, and then we will um, pop it out and we'll do it again. Because it only takes just a couple minutes. If you have not done the cast resin things, um, they're pretty awesome. Now right here on your molds, it does tell you how much it takes to fill it up. Okay, I usually go just a little bit more than that because, um, just a tish more. Because, I, I don't know, I, I, I probably measure wrong or something, but I don't know. So, because to me it says 10 milliliters, so I'm thinking 5 and 5 should do it, right? We're going to do 7 and a half and 7 and a half. And if I have a little bit extra, I'm okay with that. I'm definitely okay with that. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my little measure. You have two parts here, A and B, and I'm just gonna go up to the seven and a half. Um, it's hard to see in here with the lighting. And as soon as we get done with this, I'm gonna turn my fan back on because I am sweating. I don't know why I'm sweating so bad. Now, I could have just left it in this little measuring cup. That would have been probably the smartest thing to do because um, it was small enough that, oh no. There we go. Um, I should have opened that first. It's small, and or the, the amount I'm doing is low enough that it probably would have been okay, then I wouldn't have wasted the other cup. But you know, stuff like that happens. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in the trash before I end up with it all over me. Now, then you have to mix this. I can't remember, was it three minutes? Um, I don't remember. So we're just gonna mix it up. It kind of turns warm, uh, a warm color foggy colors, so um, see how it's turning white already like that? Okay, so I can feel it warm. I can't remember how many of you guys it's doing that. Okay, uh, mix until it's no longer cloudy. There we go. Jeez. It's funny how things just go away. They just go away out of your head when you're, um, when you're live. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna break it and throw a part, throw away the part that I used in there because I'm a tightwad, okay? Now we're just gonna pour it in this mold here and uh, hopefully, there's a lot of detail here, so I'm hoping that everything comes out really good. If not, we'll say daggone it, it should have. Um, see, I just, I gotta get up in those little corners there. Just those little corners there kind of works its way as it's going over to this. Now, see, I have a little bit left here. Um, I'm just gonna let it dry. Just gonna let it dry. Okay, so we're just gonna sit this over here. We're gonna let that set up. <laughs> I know, you turn live and you can turn, now see this stick into my glass, so I can't slide it very easily. So I'm just gonna, I didn't spill it, so I'm just gonna slide that over there out of my way. Right there, and we'll take that off. Okay, so let's get started on our beautiful paper, you guys. Is this paper not absolutely beautiful? Now, see, I'm burning up. I'm gonna have to turn the fan on. I've never seen you craft before. Well, welcome, Lee. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm a little dingy sometimes, but hey, that's what happens sometimes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you guys this board is warped, okay? Um, this was, I'm gonna just show you. This was a Howdy porch leaner that I had made and um, it was been out in our out, out at our barn forever. And I just decided that I really wasn't, I was over, I was done with it. I didn't want to um, use it out there anymore. So um, I cut it up, sanded it off and cut it up to make these smaller parts. I'm getting my brush a little bit wet. 
because the only reason I'm putting white paint on here is so that my colors and stuff on my rice paper really, really pop. Kind of like we do when we do our napkins. Um, we want all the colors and stuff to really, really pop. So um, we need to put a lighter color under the bottom. Now, do you have to? Absolutely not. I could have just put it right on top of this board. It's, it's personal preference on what you want. It still would have been just as pretty um, on the top of, the, on top of the, the lighter color board here. Now, if you had a real dark board, um, you know, it could darken up your picture a little bit, but it's, you do you, you know. Sometimes I wonder because I end up antiquing a lot of my stuff and I think, why did I even bother painting that? Because I end up making my picture a little bit darker anyway, but you know, it's something that we do, something that we have a habit of doing and we're gonna probably all gonna continue to do it because I'm sure you see a lot of people that do this right here. So, let's get a little bit more white paint on here. Now, my paint that I use is um, Rust-Oleum Chalk. That was way too much. Trying to be careful. And I get too much. It's okay. That's okay. We'll put it on something else. Um, we, uh, anyway, what was I going to say? That is Rust-Oleum Chalked Paint. I buy it in the... It's almost a quart size, not quite a quart size. Um, I buy it at Menards. They also have it on Amazon and stuff like that. You guys, I don't like to waste paint. I'm just going to stand up here and I'm going to grab a blank board. Maybe if I don't drip everywhere. Well, maybe I'm going to right here. And we're just going to I put that right over the tag. I didn't mean to do that either. That's all right. I'm going to pick that off real quick. Um, I'm just going to take this excess paint. I'm going to cover this board, okay? Because white paint is not going to hurt being on anything. So, um, you know, if I need to put, if I'm going to put a napkin or something on here, this board will be ready to go. So, because that was my fault. I, I just stuck too much. Now, some people might think that was kind of silly, but there we go. Okay, so we got that all on there. We got this board ready to go for another project. Woohoo! Oh, rock and roll, right? Rock and roll. It's so funny. I look up top. Hi, Sydney. How are you? Um, thank you, Melissa. What somebody say? Watching from rainy Tennessee. It's supposed to rain here today. My grandson's last uh, baseball game is today, and it was supposed to be at one. Right, have another board ready. It's supposed to be at one, and my daughter uh, texted me just before I went live. She said, we're gonna do it at noon today because there's rain coming in. And they're actually gonna play on the big field. They're gonna play on the rookie field, so. Because he just plays coach's pitch. He's only a kid, well, he's a first grader now. So, um, we have that going on today. I'm gonna go, uh, probably go, go ahead and go as soon as we get off of here and check him out. I'm gonna sit that down there and let that dry. I want to pull up my paper. Now look, I got a couple spots on my paper. Look at that. It's probably um, that stuff right there. Um, I bet it is. Dad got it. That's okay because I can't see it from the other side, so it's not going to matter. Now I'm going to just lay this on this board because I'm going to get it kind of wet. I got some right there too. Gee, many Christmas. <sighs> anyway. Okay, I'm going to take my water pen because I like to have my edges um, hairy. I'm just going to call it what it is. It makes them kind of hairy, fibery, not cut in a straight line, that kind of thing. I really like that tear, torn look. That is me. Um, you, just like I said on everything, you do you on this kind of stuff. Now, one of the things, oops, I just ripped my paper a little bit. That's okay if you kind of tear into your your design, just get it wet again, tear where you wanted it to be, and then when you Mod Podge that down, it's not gonna really matter. Or not necessarily Mod Podge, but whatever you use to put your papers down. Now, one of the things I do like to do sometimes is I will do an eraser, okay? And by doing the eraser, you have a little bit more control over what you're tearing than when you reach up and just grab it and start tearing. Okay, so I do like to do that sometimes right there with the, um, 
with the eraser on there. Now, I did not come up with this. My friend Grace from the Comfy Nest, she was the first person that I seen do it. She did it on a napkin, and um, I seen her do it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do that. And I've seen a lot of other people do it. That's just the person that I first seen do it, and I always, I like to give credit where credit's due. I didn't come up with this. You know, just like most of our things, you know, we see somebody do something, and, uh, you know, we, we may take it, uh, do it a little bit different or come up with a little bit different of an idea, but we get inspiration from each other. And that's what's so fun about the craft commun community and this little um, collab here of the Decopush Central Affiliates and doing these fun little releases of the new papers and stuff like that because it gives us all inspiration, not just for you guys, but amongst each other too. You know, come up with, because I'm telling you, some of the ideas that some of these people come up with, some of these ladies, wonderful creators come up with, it's like, oh my gosh, I would have never ever thought of doing that. You know? So, and then a lot of times you'll get an inspiration to do something similar or close, or maybe it, you know, triggers a memory of something that you may have seen with another project. I'm just rattling you guys why I do this. <laughs> just rattling, just rattling. Oh, well, fanta um, not fantastic that you're at the hospital, Jeannie. I did not mean that that way, but I'm glad that you were able to jump on and uh, say hello. Um, Miss Jeannie from Clifton's Crafty Casa's been having to travel to help take care of her father. And uh, she's been doing uh, lives from um, where she's at and not at home. And so sometimes that's kind of hard on us when we don't have all our stuff right there around us. But uh, she's making it work. She is making it work. God love her. God love her. So anyway right there but like i said anybody that jumps on with their page make sure you go check out their page and give them a quick follow the best thing you can do for us creators is to follow us and then not just follow us and go away but you know maybe watch a couple of our videos you know if you watch for about three minutes that counts on facebook um give us a like give us a heart you know all that kind of all that kind of fun stuff and that just shows Facebook that you want to see what we want to see and stuff and a lot of us have you know YouTube channels and TikToks and things like that go see if you can find us on the other platforms and stuff too so um, lots of fun stuff being shared everywhere social media is a wonderful thing when it's working fantastic when it's giving us a rough time sometimes we're not saying very many nice things about it, but in all in all, <laughs> it's a good thing. It was a way for everybody to get, you know, be connected and show things to and inspire everyone. It's an awesome thing, I think. I think it's an awesome thing. Okay, so now that I finally got that done, I've made my edges. See how they're a little bit hairy? Now, they I show some of the white on there, but that's okay because actually I'm gonna leave this on here. Um, right here, uh, let's put our pen right there. I'm going to tilt my fan up just a little bit off my table. It's still blowing some air on it. I don't know why I'm so hot today, but you know, I am 55, so there's that, right? <laughs> what did she say? Yes, he's doing well. He may go home today. Yay, I hope so. I hope so. That'll be nice. I'm going to take my Distress ink, and I'm just going to, I'm going to hit those white edges. I mean, uh, are they going to probably blend into my board? Yeah, they probably are. I may end up doing something else, but just to, you know, just makes me feel better that when I'm putting it down, it's kind of got the, the dark edges already, you know, because like right there, that really bright one there, we don't want that to, um, you know, stand out and stuff. We want everything to blend. Okay, right there like that. Okay, so let's take a pause a minute and let's look. I'm gonna sit this, I'm gonna just slide this 
Well, I'm going to leave that here because we've got to do another one. But look, that's already done. So let's go ahead and pop that out of there. Now, it's, it's still a little pliable, um, so it might not be completely cured. Nope, let's wait just a couple more minutes, you guys. A couple more minutes, because it was really giving me a rough time there. Okay, let's pull this guy back up here, right there, and let's get this a little more dry, right there. And we'll see if we can pop that out as soon as I get that dry. Oh, 45. No, I'm 55, girl. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. No, I'm 55. And it's funny, you know, I hated turning 40. That was rough. 50 didn't really bother me, and 55 didn't bother me. But since December, weird things, you know, like I've never had to take a medicine for anything, and now I'm being checked and we're going through the high blood pressure stuff you know just different stuff going on <laughs> it's like my goodness you know well I guess it's just like an old car you know after a while you know you got to start replacing things and things start helping happening and kind of baby things around that it just kind of I'm gonna be honest it kind of blows you know it really does it kind of blows now the decoupage I'm going to use is, or the, yeah, the decoupage is the decoupage varnish and glue. It's by Pentart. You can also get that on decoupage central. So check that out. Let's see how we're doing right here. Um, there we go. Maybe I just wasn't because it's, you know, when you first are pulling it out, it kind of pulls a little bit, but that's okay. What is awesome about this stuff, you guys, if you've never used it, I highly encourage you to get you some. Um, it is on Amazon, and I can share on my page a link to get it um, right there. But what is cool about it is look how clean it came out of that mold, okay? You don't have to worry about the clay. There's nothing wrong with the clay, but this is a little bit easier to work with. And then it stays a little bit pliable for a little while. Um, so like if you were putting, now if you were going to put it on this, you would want to do that like right this minute, okay, while it's still real super pliable. But if you had this sitting around for a little bit, if you kind of heat it up a little, it'll be a little bit pliable, you know, to where if you had a lump in your board or something like that. So I'm just going to sit that there. We're going to grab this and we're going to do another batch of this real quick so that, uh, we can fill that in again, okay? Now I'm gonna put that here and we're gonna do it what I said a minute ago. Gotta shut this off because that um, air makes that dry way too super fast. We're gonna mix it in this little, little measuring cup right here. So I'll go to seven and a half and then just under 15. I'll do the same thing I did a minute ago. It's about seven and a half right there. And then we'll go just a little above 15 right there. Okay, and then I'm going to mix it. See, I could have just done it in here before. Then I would have thrown one thing away instead of three things, or two things, right? Okay, Evelyn, thank you for stopping by. What kind is this again? This is... Um, the amazing, let me, as soon as I finish stirring it here, I'll pull the, the, um, box up here and show it to you. It's amazing cast resin and, um, they do sell it on Amazon. You can get it at Michael's, um, different, I think, um, uh, I'm not sure who else sells it. Okay. That is not getting warm. Hopefully I didn't pour too much of one or the other in there, but we'll find out. We'll find out real quick. Okay, so I'm just going to start pouring that in there. Now just be slow and gentle when you're pouring um, because you want it to kind of stay in your mold. Now what is awesome about these IOD molds, and you can also get the IOD stuff on um, Decoposh Central, but what is awesome about these molds is they do have a nice lip. 
so that when you're doing stuff like this, you have that nice lip to go up to. It doesn't like run over. Um, I say that because some of the um, cheaper molds that you can buy. Now, look, I think I probably mix that too much. Let's see if there's enough for this star right here. I mean, why the heck not since we got some out right there. Okay. So anyway, um, what is nice about them, they have a nice lip and it keeps this stuff down inside there. So if I mess that up, we'll just make more. It's okay. But here's what the box looks like. Um, that came from Amazon. Okay. Now let me show you. Nope. That's not what that is. I thought that was the same stuff, but that's not what that is. But that's what the box looks like, and you can get it at Michael's and stuff. Now, ladies, if you order stuff from Michael's, don't forget to wait till there's a coupon and uh, save you some money, honey, right? Okay, so now let's go back to... I'm jumping all over the place, aren't we? I find it at Walmart. Yes, it cures in like five or ten minutes. See, it's, it's one by one. You have a two to three minutes to fix it, you know, to stir it, you know, get everything together, poured, and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you have a fan blow, and I found out last time, it makes it cure a little bit faster. Um, and it takes about five to ten minutes, and you can take it out of the mold. So, that's awesome. I'm going to sit that over there. Okay, so we're going to start here. Now, what am I going to do? Am I going to just cover this with decoupage with my varnish right here and my glue? No, we're going to do a step at a time, okay? So I'm just going to kind of start up here at the top about where I want it to be, and we're just going to start putting it down and work our way down. Okay, let me grab my little brush that I always get. Oh, yes, I'm going to show you. We're going to paint it here in a little bit, but yes, it paints, it paints, it stains. Oh, my gosh, it's stuck to my table, my glass. <laughs> yes, it paints super duper easy. You know what? Um, hold two seconds. Let me see if I can grab this without everything I have back here falling over, okay, because I need to clean this up. Yep, everything fell. Dag nabbit. Yeah. See this right here? I did that sunflower with this same stuff. And see, it paints just perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. <laughs> we'll clean that up later. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Fun Fun stuff happens around here a lot. Okay, so I'm just gonna start putting this on. And what I'll do is I'll get this up here at the top going. And then we'll just start working our way down there because this is a very big print right here. Now, if you don't have this um, glue, uh, use your Mod Podge. Mod Podge works too. Um, I prefer this over Mod Podge. But I use Mod Podge on a lot of project projects too, so um, this this is a varnish also, so you can use this as a top coat on your project also, and it doesn't leave like a residue or anything like that. It doesn't change, you know. It doesn't go from matte to glossy and anything weird like that. Okay. So we're gonna go around the edges once we get the whole thing done, but I'm just pushing that down. That's another thing that's wonderful about these rice papers. These rice papers are thick enough. Um, this is what I'm using right here. Pentark, decoupage, varnish, and glue. What is amazing about these papers is if I needed to, let's say I just pushed that down. If I needed to move that over a little bit, it's still thick enough that if I was very gentle, I could move that, okay? I don't recommend it, but you can do it, okay? So that's what's nice about using rice papers instead of like your printer papers or instead of, of um, you know, not that you can't use it, but it's not as forgiving for if you don't like wrinkles, if you misplace something and you needed to move it or something like that. Um, you know, it's not as forgiving for that is what I'm trying to say. 
okay? And see, I'm not getting any wrinkles. I'm not doing an iron method or anything. Wrinkles don't bother me, though, when I am doing decoupaging. Um, I have them, so my projects can have them, too. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I don't mind them at all, at all. So, again, this is for Decoposh Central. My link is right there in the bottom. If you use my link, I do get a little bit of a commission off of that. So, but it doesn't change the price for you. You pay the same. So, um, if you just click on my link, then that will, uh, you can order and then I will get credit for that. And I would appreciate that. Everybody today is an affiliate for Decoposh Central. Everybody will have their own links posted and stuff. So, uh, you know, make sure, you know, make sure you use one of us anyway. Doesn't matter who, just make sure you use one of us um, so that, uh, you know, uh, she can see that this was worth doing these little craft things that, you know, people were jumping on and getting the stuff. So, um, anyway, anyway. Here we go. So looky there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And that's what's so beautiful about this, this these papers, you guys. Now look, I can totally stop right here. I can totally stop right there. That is absolutely beautiful. Okay? I'm going to go along my edges here just to make sure that I have my edges down. I like to go over the tops of them like this just to make sure. Now, I can take this varnish and go over my whole project and it will seal it. Um, what I normally do is I take and I spray my projects. And that is probably what I'll do with this one because it's so big. Um, but you definitely can do it with this varnish, this glue right here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and spray it when I get it all done because um, I'm still going to be doing some painting on here and stuff like that. I just want to make sure my edges are down. And um, I don't, I'm don't. i just going to be honest. I don't want to waste it. I want to use it for my decoupaging. I don't really want to use it for a varnish because I, wanna, I don't want to waste it. I would rather use it as a glue. So what I usually do on my projects is if they're in an area that is going to get, if they're going to get touched, um, weathered or anything like that, I spray it with two time, the Rust-Oleum two time clear coat. And then if it's going to go outside after I spray it, I put varnish on it with a paint, with a paintbrush and stuff. So that's what I do. But look at that. I could stop right there. I don't need to do anything else to this at all. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, but we're going to, but we're going to. You guys, I still, I did the wrong ones. Look at that. Well, we'll do it this way. <laughs> you guys, I'm such a ding dong. I should have done this side because I was looking at it like this, like a ding dong. Okay, you guys see that? I was looking at it like this, that it needed to be in this corner because that's how I was setting it. Um, but I should have done that one because it's the opposite way. But that's okay. We will make it like this. We'll do it long ways that way. I'm a ding dong. I'm a ding dong. Okay, so this is pretty much cured. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer. And while I wait, because I want to paint those, I'm going to do my edges of my board. And how this is how I'm going to do the edges of my board. I kind of want to use a brown color. I'm going to take my stencil brush, all right? I like to use my stencil brush for this because, um, where did my paper plug? I guess I need to open some paper plates here. Do I get for cleaning? I don't know where my stuff is, right? So anyway, um, I like to use my stencil brush because it's not important to me to make sure that my entire edges are covered, okay? So I will use um, my stencil brush, and it also will allow some of it to come up here on the edge, which I really like that work. Now this is just burnt umber, and I'm just using it because it's sitting here. Okay, now, could I take um, some stain or something like that? Yes, most definitely. Hi, Gail. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some on my brush, and just like if I, if I was stenciling, I'm going to work that paint up into my bristles right there. 
just like that, okay? So now, oh, and see, I'm still a little bit wet, but that's okay. I'm just gonna take my board here, and here we go. We're just gonna start putting this on this edge here, just like that. And it's gonna cover that white up and get it coated with a brown. And I'll show you what it's looking like on the top here in just a second. But see, I'm not worrying a ton about full coverage. Now, could I? Yes, I could go along here and make sure the whole thing is uh, brown, but I kind of like that crazy um, look that, you know, maybe it had been around for a minute. Oh gosh, you guys, I apologize for that. Okay, so right here, I'm just kind of going. Now this is the cut side. It's gonna take a little more paint to not show all your cut lines. So um, I add just a little bit more when I'm doing the cut sides right there. Okay. Now this board I've had around for a while, so it's very dry and it's really sucking up my paint. So I'm adding a little extra paint on my brush than I normally do right there. Okay. There we go. Just like this. Right here. Okay, easy peasy lemon squeezy right there. Got a lot of stuff going on. Now look at my board. I see it kind of framed in the outside of my edges. Now I don't like that line there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna kinda swoosh along there and have that kind of blend so that it's not that stark white showing and going out to the edges. Okay, now when you frame in your projects, it makes you uh, look towards the center of your project rather than, um, you know, that's why you have a picture frame and it really draws your eye to your project. Now this was already framed in, so we don't have to do this necessarily here, but I really didn't want that stark white to show there. I'll try not to make a bunch of noise here. See how easy that is to do. That's why I like doing it with the stencil brush. Oh my gosh, you guys. Let's make a whole bunch of noise. There we go. Okay, but look. Now see how that looks? It looks finished. The white doesn't just jump out at you. You can still see that it's there, but it doesn't jump out at you. Now here was my thought on the um, these guys. Okay, so I was thinking about putting this like right down here on the edge. Thank you, Melissa. Um, and here's the other one. Now, I like to paint mine before I put them down. And the reason that I like to paint my molds um, is because I can get along the edges and stuff. But see, we can just kind of stick that on there just to add some dimension to our project. Does it need it? No. But it just adds a little bit of dimension. Okay, now see, oops, here's the star that we did. I'm not gonna use the star. See, I have a little extra there. That'll come right off when we are done. Um, when it gets a little bit harder, I can take, well, I can just show you guys right this second. I mean, why the heck not? I can either lay it down and take like a box knife or something like that. I can lay this right here and I can just cut that still super pliable so it's not but I could also just take scissors and cut it that would also work too see because it's not cutting because it's very pliable if I let it dry a little bit more it would be better but I can just take scissors and cut it off too Let's see just like that all right so now that excess is gone so I've still got more on there, but we're gonna let that dry and um, we'll play with that some more here in a little bit. Okay, so now I need to take these guys and I kinda wanna make them this uh, green color. 
okay? Green and then um, antique it a little bit. Now the green that I'm thinking of using is I'm gonna use this avocado green. I love the avocado green. I think it is really pretty. And I'm just gonna paint these and then we will kinda stain them, uh, put a wax over them so that it's a little bit darker and you can see all the dimensions that are in that mold and stuff. So I'm just gonna grab me a brush right here um, thank you, Michelle. You're sweet. Okay, I'm just going to go right on my pay thing here. Okay, now, because look at all of that dimension. Okay, so if I do this, which would be perfect if it wasn't white. See, it's just kind of hitting the edges. But I really want the paint to get down in there. So I'm going to just dab. See that? I'm going to dab and it's going to get down there because I don't want the white to show. Um, now, if you, if you were doing a project that it wouldn't matter if the white showed, you could just paint, paint. But I'm just dabbing because I don't want any of the white to be showing because my project is already, you know, a little bit distressed and stuff. But see how easy this is to paint. Somebody was asking earlier about the painting. It paints just like it's a piece of paper. Um, you know, it stays on there. I've never had it not cover really, really well. Now, I don't want puddles of paint in this. Uh, you know, so don't make sure you make puddles. Okay, I'm gonna sit that right over there and let's get this one here. But I definitely want it down into the all them little grooves and things like that. So how are we doing on time? We got 19 minutes left, you guys. Now I'm hoping that I can at least get one of these tags of the Santas over here done. And I'm going to show you how simple and easy it is to do one. Um, what you can just use stuff that you have. You don't have to use anything super fancy or nothing to make them with. Okay, that looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my brush right there. And I'm going to grab my hair dryer. My little craft dryer right here. Up there it only tells me who's watching. So what did I use to make my mold? I used, or make the, ca the things out of there. So I used the Amazing Casting Resin right there. And what's nice about it is it works real super fast. And totally awesome um, so we poured both of these during this last hour or this last 40 minutes we did both of them so it only takes five to ten minutes for the mold to cure and all that kind of stuff so very nice and easy okay so I'm gonna look at what the green looks like on there we may just leave these green because I'm looking at this and it's kind of cool looking now if I would have had a mold that had um, the ivy-like stuff, the um, holly, I guess you could say. I need to move my picture over so you guys can see it a little better. Um, if I had a mold that had those, I probably would have used those. Um, I'm going to go along here because um, the edges are still a little bit white there. I didn't get all the way down. So I'm just going to tap those because, like I said, I don't really want some white showing. Okay, but I'm going to look and see if we even want to put anything on these to make them a little bit darker. I'm going to take this one that's fairly dry and see what that looks like on there. Got it upside down, but see what that looks like on there. I think that looks pretty good. So um, make sure my edge is here. I did better on this one, you guys. Getting all the way down into the to the edges here right there like that but I could I could take I could take my stencil brush that had a little bit of brown on it and let's do that and I'm gonna hit this with this and what it's gonna do is it's gonna just make my my piece it just made it look like it has just a tish more dimension. So you can really see the edges. You can see them both the same, but I, th you know, I don't know. It just added a little bit more. Did it to one, got to do it to both. Now, ding dong me, I did not turn my uh, hot glue gun on. I can't believe I did that. 
So I'm probably not going to be able to get these glued on here. So I'm going to sit this right here and this one right here. I'm going to reach over and we are going to plug it in. And then we can go over to our other project and I can come back and glue those on there. I told myself twice. I said, don't forget to turn your glue gun on. Don't forget to turn your glue gun on. I didn't turn my glue gun on. <laughs> okay, but see what this is going to look like. Now we can decide, do we want these like all the way up in the corners like that? Or do we want them down a little bit? I'm thinking, I think I might want them up just a little bit out, just like that, right there. Isn't that pretty? I think that's pretty. And that just add a little something extra as far as dimension goes. Okay, I'm gonna sit those right there. I'm gonna show you guys something. I'm gonna show you something that I do on my boards. Got my handy dandy um, drill out. I'm gonna show you this real quick and then we'll do the other thing. Okay, I like to take, these are, these hold your rebarb in your cement, okay? What's the name of this mold? This is the Christmas, I don't know. It's the Christmas tree mold from IOD, right there, okay? Um, Nowadays, they put the name of the mold actually on the other side. Well, I threw my packaging away. So anyway, but these are, they hold your rebarb in your concrete, okay? I like to use these as hangers, and a lot of times I will put them on top of my project like this, okay? Now, why do I do that? Because I have a whole nother surface here that I can put something on. Now this is Christmas, okay? So what I would put on this back side is either fall or Thanksgiving, okay? So then when it's hanging, I can just flip it over when it's Christmas or winter because after Christmas, I could just flip it over and use it for Christmas. Now, the other thing is by putting it up here on top and using this little wire here, if I don't use this and hang it up and if I just have it like leaning, that doesn't make this look weird, you know, that it's up there, okay? Oh, Christmas tree's the name. Thank you, Melissa, sorry, there's only a few left, so make sure you guys go check, get, get one if you want one. Um, it's a, I, I've used it a ton. I've used it with clay, I've used it with the cast, I just, I absolutely love it, okay? So what I do, is I kind of, I don't get all technical with it. Okay, I lay the, I lay my board down like this, all right? And I kind of look, I take my ruler, I don't get super crazy about it. My board is 12, I need the center to be at about six, okay? And I just bent it, I just bent it. I didn't like, I, I didn't do anything weird, like making sure that it was exactly bent in the middle or nothing like that. I just made it and then I kind of bent these so that I could um, nail them down. Actually, I need to bend it the other way. It works a little bit better when it's bent the other way. This one must be one I bent the wrong way and I threw it back in the packaging. Now, those that whole package of those little things is dirt cheap. Um, I can't remember exactly how much they are, but they are not very expensive. Okay, and it makes for a nice little wire. Now, could you just take wire and do this with it? Absolutely. You could just do the same thing with wire if you wanted to. Now, I did order on Amazon some bigger head screws right here, just so that, that it grabs most of that piece there. Now you say it's nice and silver instead of black. I'll paint it black so that it all matches. But I'm just gonna show you guys. I'll take this, six would be my center, right there. So I'm gonna put my little holes, and I'm gonna just take my drill that I'm gonna use for this. I need to use kind of a small one. Okay, you wanna drill first so that you don't um, uh, split your board and I just take my drill and I just do this I just make a mark so that I can see where that one goes okay now I grab this little roto bit drill it's nothing fancy our bigger drills downstairs and I just give it give myself a start I didn't go down in there very well 
and just kind of eyeball it. I just give myself a little bit of a start right here, like that. I don't even go all the way down in there. All right, now, ding dong me, I didn't even bring a screwdriver over here. Let me see, do I have a, a bit in here? No, but I probably should be using a smaller drill bit. There we go. Let's go do that again. Okay, so I'm just making a little hole for it right there. Just like that. No big deal. Easy peasy. Okay, now I need to grab a screwdriver. Now, you can use a, a drill that you have the screw in. Mine must be downstairs. I thought it was laying right there, but it's not, and of course, here it is. I believe I got this, this screwdriver here from Miss Melissa. Went in one of her craft boxes. Okay, and then I'm just going to screw this on here. All right. Such a simple and fun way to... Um, have a hanger on your project, but still be able to use use both sides, you know? Okay. Loosen that up. Tighten that up a little bit. All right. Okay, see how we're looking? Like I said, I'll paint that. It's not a big deal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, and I'm just going to mark where my hole should be, about there. And like I said, we don't get crazy and try to do anything super fancy with the measuring and stuff. And if any of my fellow toolmaker friends are on here, yes, I know this isn't how we do things in the real world, <laughs> but we are crafting. Okay, why is that not wanting to come out? There we go. Okay, then I'm gonna take this other little screw right here. Let's just start that in there. Now you can adjust this. You know, let's say you put your screw in a bad spot and it doesn't hold your stuff down or whatnot. You can adjust this and fix it, make this tighter or whatever you need to do. Okay, ladies? But that is something simple and easy for a hanger, okay? So now that'll hang and I can hang it either direction. I don't want to use it as a hanger, I don't have to. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you guys that because I know a lot of people, I'm always telling everybody that I do my projects double-sided and then they're like, well, how do you hang it up if it's double-sided, you know, because most of the time you put a, uh... now I could have used wood glue on this. I didn't even think about that, but we're just going to use hot glue right now. And if for some reason this comes off, I will uh, uh, fix it with good glue, wood glue or whatever. But right there we go. I'm just going to kind of hold that for a second. Right there. Now, it uh, looks like I'm going to run out of time. I'm not going to be able to do my other project, but I'm going to talk about it and kind of show you guys a little bit of how, uh, um, what I'm going to do and we'll start working on it. And then when I get them, I can make a picture and show that to you guys. But look here, look at this project. Is that not pretty or what? Now it would be pretty to do these in all four corners, but I kind of wanted, oops, let's go this way. The ivy to, whoop, there we go, see. The holly, I keep saying ivy, but the holly to stand out too. But I absolutely love how this looks. Now you guys, you, you know, this was easy. This I did this with the cast mold, um, the casting molds, but you wouldn't even have to put those on there. If you don't have wood, do it on a piece of cardboard. You can paint a piece of cardboard, one of your Amazon boxes, to look like it's wood. Um, you can do this kind of stuff on anything. You don't have to, you know, have wood or have anything fancy or nothing like that. I'm gonna slay, I'm gonna, well, I wanna use that. Okay, let me show you what I was gonna do with these. I'm gonna take a piece of this. What this is, is, um, it's my granddaughter's old tablet. It is watercolor paper, okay? I like it because it's thick, all right? And I'm just gonna cut this out of here and I'm gonna show you real quick. 
I'm going to take this and I'm just going to glue this to this paper. Okay? Now, what am I going to have? I'm going to have a thick card here, okay, that I can cut out. All right? What I can do is then on the back of this, I could write a note to someone. Okay? I could, let's just start working on this while I'm, while I'm yapping. I could take a little, this paper, this little card, punch a little hole in it, put a little bit of, um, of this stuff, put a piece of ribbon, whatever you have in the hole, and you could put this on your bas gift baskets at Christmas time. Um, you could put this and go over to your neighbor and just hang it on their door while they're at work or something like that, and they can come home to a nice little note. It could be a thank you note. You could send it in the mail to somebody. But it's nice and thick, and it will... Um, uh, stay and they can use it if they wanted to as an ornament on their tree um, you know something something along those lines now what I could do is I could have tore these with the um, uh, you know watered them and tore them a little bit which is probably what I would do if I wasn't hurrying I would go ahead and cut my page my my card here a little bit bigger than the size of the the actual print on there but um, I'm going to show you how quick and easy this is to do also okay so we are just slapping this on here we have four minutes all right now I'm not even going to well I'm going to because it would drive me nuts if I didn't I'm going to grab I just want to make sure that's down Right there, just like that. Okay. Down, nice and good. Nice and good. Let's put the lid on this. All right, set it right here. Now I'm going to reach up here and I'm going to grab my paper cutter. Now, do you need to use a paper cutter? Nope. You could just use good old scissors. You should probably wait till your stuff is dry, but you know, we're in a we're in a time crunch here. Okay. So I'm just going to cut these like that. Now if it's a little crooked, that's okay too. It's not going to hurt a darn thing. If it happens to be a little bit crooked. In the long run, nobody notices that kind of stuff except for you. And I would have had to make sure that I put this on here absolutely straight, and I did not. So, oh, I because it's wet it tore a little bit right there but that's okay we can fix that not a big deal oops I didn't cut all the way through right there there we go we can fix that too okay so now I'm gonna put this guy right here oh look I tore it you guys it's not dry that's okay though that's okay because we can just make it let me just get my scissors out that was a bad mistake. It's just not dry. You should wait till it's dry. But we're going to cut that one out, and I'm going to show you how we'll fix that. It's not going to be a big deal. Okay? So look right here. I'm going to cut down through here. If it was, like I said, if the, your glue was dry, it would be a lot better. Okay? So now I have this fun little tag right here where I made a boo-boo on. But that's okay because we can grab our... Our distress ink right here okay there's a couple things we can do here let me pull out this corner edger right here like this again it's not dry and I can cut so it's rounded corners that's gonna make it look um, a little more finished with the rounded corners because I have one minute I'm gonna distress ink this is what I'm gonna do, okay? I'm gonna go completely around it. I'm gonna put a little hole and I could put a little note and I can send that to somebody. That could be a tag, that could go to somebody or whatever, whatever. Yes, definitely make sure it's dry. I normally do, but I was trying to hurry and show you guys. But I think that's simple, fun, and easy, just a fun little project that you can do um, with anything. Um, you And if you do the rice, uh, if you do the rice papers, 
But over on Decoupage Central, there is also a printable section, you guys. Make sure you check that out. And it's a place where you can get printables that you can print on your um, printer by yourself. So right there we go. This is what we did today. I'd love it if you'd use my um, link right there. If you're in the Decoupage Central page, just go down and uh, Ginger will be on momentarily if she's not already there. And you guys, I got to go. Thank you for stopping by. Bye-bye.